Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video, is the third video in this series where we're kind of turbocharging server-side rendering with um, HTMX and Alpine. So in the previous video, so in the first video we kind of set up server-side routing with EJS and Express. In the second video we kind of spiced it up with some Alpine and in this video we're going to spice it up with some HTMX. And there's other technologies like, uh, like I think like Ruby on Rails has something called TurboLinks and if you're not familiar with what TurboLinks does, it's like these are like links that I think basically they pre-download the page. So that way when you click on the link, it's already ready to swap out the page. Um, <clears throat> and uh, again, other ways of trying to create that sort of fast website, that fast sort of like client-side rendered feel, but without necessarily having to do a fully client-side rendered site and having the search engine and security issues that come along with that that end up increasing the load of work that developers have to do. So that's sort of like the goal here. Um, HTMX is pretty cool. What it does, as far as I can understand, is essentially what you do is instead of like Alpine, where you're kind of doing, you're kind of injecting JavaScript logic into your front end. What you're doing with HTMX is you are swapping out HTML and making requests for additional HTML to to swap out content. Okay, so um, let's try it out. Okay, I already have the HTMX script tag added on there, so that was there before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this main tag. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have an h1 saying let's fill in the div below. And then we're going to have a div with an ID of target. Okay. And it's just going to be an empty div. And then we're going to have a button and that says fill it in. Okay. So basically the way this would work is that we need to create another route. So let's create, a, oh, actually what I can do is I can just create an HTML file. So let's, we already have the cheese at HTML, so let's just write cheese in this HTML file. Okay. And if anything, let's just make it just HTML. Just, or I mean just this, the H1. Cheese. Okay. So my goal is to make it when we click that button. So when we click this button, it should make a request for this cheese uh, file, and then it's gonna replace or inject the, that HTML into this div. That's sort of what HTMX does for us. So instead of us requesting JSON, we're requesting HTML, okay? And then, I mean, that's not so cool with like that HTML file, but imagine you have like server-side rendered HTML it makes a request for that and then swaps it in so you're not having this whole page load thing going on it just kind of is like a cool deal okay so let's try this out so let's see here so this way this would work is like you load the script tag and now I can say when I want to say hx get which means get make a get request and then you're gonna say where you want to make a get request to which would be to slash cheese .html. okay and the trigger is going to be when you click it. So a click is the trigger. Okay, and let me just do this just in case we're going to be adding a whole bunch of stuff. So let's just do it all in multiple lines to make this orderly. Okay, now the question is then where do I want to target the swap, the, 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 the deal? So my target is going to be that div. Okay, and that's why I gave it an ID. So I'm going to say, hey, target the div. Um, with the, let's just do it this way, the ID of target. Okay, specifically I want you to target that. Okay, and then what I want you to do, the behavior, um, I want you to swap, let's do it the inner HTML. I'm pretty sure I can do that. Let's see here, hx swap. Let me just see if there's an example using the inner HTML. Okay, swap, 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 swap. Targets, here we go, swapping. Yep, so I can target inner HTML. Puts the contents inside the target HTML element. Okay, so that's basically what this does. So it should be, so basically what happens is when I click the button, it should make a get request to slash use HTML, grab the HTML, and then stick it in that div. That's essentially what it should do. So let's try. 
Let's refresh the page. Okay. Cheese! And it works! That's pretty amazing. That's actually really cool. Um, and the beauty of that is, like, normally what I'd have to do is I would have to go request the data with JSON and then create all this DOM logic that then injects the data with JSON. But instead, what it's doing is just requesting, making a request for the HTML text, and this is injecting the inner the text there, which is a lot quicker process. Um, that's pretty cool. Okay, so again, just to show you that, I click the button, it makes a get request to the URL. So now, so what's the implications of that? Okay, so let's pretend we make another route. Okay, um, and this one's going to be app dot get slash bread. Okay, rec res. And we're gonna do another res.render. And we'll just say bread.ejs. And then we wanted to send that like an array of um, breads. Okay, and we'll just say uh, that's gonna equal an array of rye, wheat, Um, rye, wheat, uh, cornbread. Okay, you guys get the idea. So now I'll create this new view, new file, uh, bread.ejs. So then I can server side render this. So I can just sit there and say, hey, there's a UL. And inside that UL, I'll use ejs to like iterate. So I'll say percentage for bread of breads okay and let me just make sure I put that opening curly bracket there and the closing curly bracket okay so there's our loop and then for each for each bread what I want to do is just do like an h1 that is the bread okay and there we go I've now generated this like bunch of, or actually let's do an li. That should be an li. Okay, an li for each bread. Okay, so there, I'm. this file is generating that. So all the stateful logic is in the server side template that generates like, okay, here, here's, here's the details, whatnot. And then when I need that, okay, in my index.ejs, I can just say, okay, make a request to slash bread. Okay. And it'll go get that HTML. So let's see. Oops. Okay. What did I do there? Uh, oh, I didn't actually do this. Percentage equals red. I have to template that. But you see, it's working. Okay. So now if I render this and I go like this, and see, it renders that. But the thing is that, like again, the actual creation of the rye wheat corn happened on the server. HTMX was just pulling in that already rendered HTML. So you can actually do a lot of the things, have that effect that you would have with like a React, where hey, you'd pull in that user's data and show their page when they click on a button and show their info, except you would actually render all that info data on the server and only the HTML ever shows up in the browser. So they're not, it's not like a savvy user can go inside your, go inside DevTools and see all the user data and see everything that was passed in as JSON. They just see the HTML. Like if I click on this bread request, See, all that was sent back was HTML. All that happened was that HTML was injected here. And you can do that with, and the cool thing is that it allows you to do that with post, get, uh, put, delete requests. So you can actually do all sorts of uh, types of requests and, and make it work and make this uh, handle that. So that's pretty cool. And again, you power this up you mix this with server-side rendering, you mix this with some of that sprinkled in uh, reactivity with Alpine, and uh, you, you got some powerful stuff going on. Okay, that you can basically, and these are both sort of very li like light libraries. Okay, I don't think necessarily Alpine can do what HTMX does and vice versa. So, you know, they can both definitely complement each other. Um, so again, basically HTMX is more like you're pulling in chunks of HTML and swapping out chunks of HTML. While Alpine is more like, hey, we're defining blocks of code that have state in the HTML and then having them respond in different ways to that changes in that little bit of state. And, um, you know, but basically with setup like this, 
you, you have some uh, fire powers where you can have server-side rendering, you can have this, and you don't necessarily have to go bring in, you can just use normal HTML and work primarily in HTML, or it, basically if you're a Python programmer and you just really just don't want to touch JavaScript, you can do the vast majority of everything you want to do without ever having to touch uh, uh, JavaScript uh, by mixing in Alpine and um, HTMX with your templates. That's pretty cool, okay? So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.